Today I am so excited to be able to share with you three new Dollar Tree DIYs that I think are perfect moving on into winter and I love their farmhouse touches. Hi and welcome if you are new. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Calm and Crazy. What makes this even more exciting is that today I am collabing with Caitlin with Crafts by Caitlin. I absolutely just love and adore her. She is one of my favorite people here on YouTube. I'm assuming you probably know who she is, but if for some reason you don't, Caitlin does some of the best like Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs and she is the mom of the cutest little girls. So after you see this video, go make sure you check out her DIYs as well. I will leave her channel as well as her video linked in the description box below. If you are coming over from Caitlin's channel, thank you so much. I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and become a part of my DIY family. What makes this even better is that today's video is actually a giveaway. Caitlin and I are both sharing our top five favorite Amazon products that we use when we're crafting and one lucky person is going to be able to win all 10 products. Yep, you heard it, all 10. Is that not absolutely fantastic? Yes, I am so excited about this. So I will get more information about the giveaway towards the end of the video and I'll have some information in the description box for you as well. So make sure you check all that out, stay tuned. So how we're gonna do it is we're just gonna show you the tools in action as we create our DIY. So I will explain more about what the tools are, why I love them. So let's just go ahead and get right on into it. My first product or my first tool from Amazon is this mat from Arteza. Now, it won't take you long to figure out why I love this. This is definitely a newer purchase for me. It is 12 by 18, and it is the perfect size if you are crafting, you're in a tighter space. Okay, I might be a little shallow, but I also happen to love the color. So you have this soft gray on this side of it, and then you have a deeper gray on the other side. And as I go throughout this video, I will use this so many times. So let's move on to the project. So here I have a placemat from the Dollar Tree. I think it is super cute. I love the blue and the wood grain and the always stay humble and kind. Now I have done similar projects to this in the past. It's so easy. So I have an 11 by 14 picture frame. If you don't like the black, you can always paint it a different color, one that matches your decor better. So simply going to remove everything from the picture frame and I'm going to use the glass inside as a guide in order to cut down my mat to be the size that I need. And this brings me to my second favorite crafting tool, my Fiskars crafting knife. I love this thing. I get questions about it all the time. Every time I use it, you have seen it so many times if you have been around. I just love that it. it has that little finger hold. It just makes it so easy, convenient. I, I just cannot say enough good things about it. And it is under $6. It's just fantastic. I would, honestly, I can't use other craft knives after having used this one. As you saw, I just used the craft knife to trim around the glass so that the placemat will now fit inside of the 11 by 14 frame. It is that simple. Once everything was cut, or once the placemat was cut, I just placed it back into the frame, added the glass, and then the backing. Now, if you're okay with like the glare of the glass, you could put the glass back in first and then the mat. I just didn't want that glare. Hard to believe that for only $2, you have this super cute farmhouse wood faux wood looking sign. I just absolutely adore this and it is just so easy to put together. For my next project, I'm using the small wooden tray that I got from the crafter square section at Dollar Tree and some scrapbook paper that I pick up at Hobby Lobby. I always get it for, for a dollar. That brings me to my third favorite tool are these one and a half inch paint brushes. They come in a pack of two. I absolutely love them. I use them of course for chalk paint and acrylic paint, but I also love to use them for Mod Podge. They clean up beautifully. I just cannot say enough good things. Here's the package that they come in so that you can see what they look like, the price you cannot beat. I was using like some of those sponges over and over and after a while that really starts adding up in price and I wanted something that I could just wash and reuse. And in the end, this is more of a money saving item for me to have and I love these. And I actually have two sets now and maybe I need a third. 
start off with, I'm just taking a pencil and measuring the bottom of the tray so that I can get a general idea of the size of the tray for my paper. And I can just trim that out with a pair of scissors. After that, I take the scrapbook paper and I place it inside the tray and I use my finger to press like a crease in, into any of the extra paper because my paper is just slightly still too big. And it knew it would be because the inside of the tray, of course, is gonna be a little bit larger than the bottom of the tray. But that was a good guide for me so that I wouldn't have too much paper to work with. Then I'm going back in with my handy dandy little craft knife and I'm just trimming out that excess, just running along that little seam or the edge, whatever you wanna call it, and getting rid of any of the excess paper I have. It is just that simple. I set the paper aside and now it is time for me to paint the tray. I have chosen to go in with gray. So this is a Waverly's Chalk Paint in Elephant. It's a beautiful dark gray and I only have to use one coat to paint the entire thing. Now I do paint everything from top to bottom all the way around. I like the entire thing to be painted. What's great about chalk paint is you really can get away with just doing one coat on most projects because it's such a thick pig pigmented paint. Once your paint has completely dried, then you can go in with a thin layer of Mod Podge all over the bottom of your tray, making sure that you get all the way to the very edges and this paintbrush is fantastic for doing that. Once you have your paintbrush or your Mod Podge all the way coated on the entire bottom, then go ahead and lay your paper down and then press around going from inside out, making sure that you have no bubbles. Now, I personally do not like to add a layer of Mod Podge until my bottom layer has completely dried because if I do, I find that I get bubbles. So let this set completely dry and then go in with another layer of Mod Podge to seal and protect it. Then go ahead and set that aside and let it completely dry and then it is ready to go and it is such a cute tray and there are so many different ways that you can style it. You can use it to put candles on it. It'd be so cute on a nightstand to hold like some flowers. If you have a guest bedroom for them to put their little trinkets on, watches, earrings, things like that. I think this is absolutely darling and of course you can customize it to the colors that match your bedroom or your home decor. For my third project, I'm using a wire wreath form from Dollar Tree as well as this white microfiber towel that you get in the automotive section. And that brings me to my favorite fourth tool. This is a fantastic rotary cutter. Now, if you don't do a lot with material, you may not even think you need a rotary cutter, but I use this, of course, you'll see it here on this project. I use it for non-wired ribbon. And if you haven't figured it out, it is all about the handle for me. And this curved handle makes it fit into my hand so perfectly. I love this thing and could not be without it. So I folded my towel in half and I'm taking a straight edge of my rotary cutter and I'm just trimming off one of the sewn edges so that it now has a raw edge because the rest of it, I just want everything to have raw edges. Let's just put it that way. It's just easier that way all my edges match up, except for on the ends, I'm not too worried because those will be covered up. Then I cut everything into three inch strips. Now you will need two towels because you will need an extra three inch strip from the second towel in order to complete wrapping it, or at least I did. I guess it all depends on how exactly you wrap it. Once you have all of your strips cut out, you will need six strips all together and you will use my fifth favorite tool in order to attach the different strips together as you are wrapping it around. And this is my Sure Bonder cordless glue gun. I love this thing. Sure Bonder sent this to me when they first launched this. I got to actually help them launch this. And this is what sparked me wanting to do this giveaway to begin with. Originally, Sure Bonder did a giveaway with this and I saw that so many of you love this and wanted this and I wanted a chance to actually be able to give it to somebody else as well. So here you can see that this is a detailed precision tip. It is cordless. What I love about Sure Bonder is that they have these little wings on the side, so if you lay it back on its side, it doesn't get that stopped up backflow like some of the glue guns do. It does have like a two minute period where you can still work with it when you take it off. They don't drip like so many glue guns do. Now the first day that I had this, it was dripping. So if you get this and you notice that, 
be patient because I got a little concerned, but after that, I've had no problems since then. And any Sherbond or glue gun, any at all, you will never be disappointed. I have loved every single one of mine. I have four of them and I have one on my wish list, fingers crossed, that somebody that loves me will actually get that for me for Christmas. Here's hoping. As you can see, I just added some hot glue and then it started to wrap around. And then when I finished up one strip, I'm gonna go in with some hot glue on the end and then I will attach a second strip and continue to wrap. If I ever have a strip finish where it will end up on the front side, I will trim it so that I always attach my two pieces on the back side. That way my front side stays looking pretty and nice and it's my back side that always has the pieces adhered together. When you're done, just take that last piece and glue it down onto the back and then you're ready to embellish. So here I have some lamb's ear. I actually got this at Walmart. I think it is beautiful and for the price, you can't beat it. So for these two, it is like $2 and I think that is such a steal. And all together, I do have three of them. So it's just about $3. And I'm just gonna take them and place them onto the wreath, just kind of stacking them one on top of each other and very carefully hot gluing them down in different spots in order to hide the hot glue. If you wanted to try to go in with a floral wire, you could, but I think you would see it. And I don't think it would be as inconspicuous as just using a little bit of hot glue. So for me, this just made sense. And so as you can see, I'm just laying it down, adding in just tiny bits of hot glue, a little bit at the top, a little bit in the center, and a little bit at the end. And on the very last one, I just curled that stem up. I didn't wanna cut it off just in case at some point I decided I wanna tear this apart and use it for something else. As a crafter, you know we do that at times. <laughs> So here I am going to attempt a bow using this beautiful buffalo checked ribbon that I picked up in the Christmas section at Hobby Lobby. If you really want to know how to do some amazing bows, check out Olivia's Romantic Home. That is where I learned how to attempt this bow effort. If you want to see the master at work, you need to check her out. So I'm just taking my ribbon and folding it over itself at, I'm using, doing it at four inches. And again, going back to my mat, I told you this thing comes in handy for so many things, not just if you're a quilter or anything like that. It is just fantastic to have and the size could not be better. So I'm looping it over five different times. Always wanna do things in odd numbers. Once I have that done, I fold my loops in half so I can find my center point and then give it two notches. I then take a pipe cleaner and I wrap it around and twist it to hold that together. I go ahead and I dovetail my little ends by cutting from the outside towards the center going upwards and then I fluff up my bow. Now your best fluffing is gonna come once everything is all done, but this will give you a general idea. After that, I did go in with three more pieces of ribbon in order to add some tells. This is a step that you could choose to do or leave out if you wanted to. I went with in with 10 inch strips or loops, I should say, or a doubled over 10 inch strip. Now, honestly, I cut off extra. And so you could go in with seven or 14 inch loops and that would be plenty because I definitely had too long of tells. So once you have those, you add those on with your pipe cleaner and then you can dovetail those as well. Once your bow is all done, you can just use the pipe cleaner in order to attach it to your wreath form by wrapping it around and twisty tying it onto the back. And then you can just fluff your bow up and there you have a beautiful farmhouse, soft, cozy winter wreath. I absolutely love this. If you wanted to add some sort of wording to it or a sign to it, you absolutely could. But I personally really just love the simplicity of this. I think it is just perfect for winter. I am so excited to have this hanging in my home. I hope that you have enjoyed all three of these super easy and fun DIYs where I have used five of my favorite tools that I have gotten from Amazon. I'm so excited that this is a giveaway because I want to share the love and I'm so glad that Caitlin did this with me because we are excited to be able to give this to one of you as a way of saying thank you so much for supporting us. This is just so much fun for both of us. 
So we have over $150 in this giveaway that we are so excited for you to have. And there are only three simple things that you need to do in order to enter this giveaway. So first, make sure that you leave a comment on both of our YouTube channels. Second, head over to Instagram and make sure that you're following both of us. And third, on Instagram, you are gonna tag a friend that loves crafting as much as you do under both of our Instagrams in the post that is related to this giveaway. So that is two YouTube comments, two Instagram follows and two friends tagged on Instagram. It is just that simple. I will have a list of the rules in the description box as well as with the post over on Instagram. I will have links to Caitlin's channel, her video, her Instagram, all of that good stuff so you can find everything about her as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I am excited for one of you to win this giveaway. I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.